So a lot of this, making the better world, you know, we're all in this together. So we have to really do some things so we can keep being there together. <coughs> now, Shiloh is every single person here is I'm connected to. I just want everybody to know that that everyone's very dear to me, and you know, it's just a, it's it's just a really privilege to be here with everybody. Human rights and the work toward human rights is something that comes naturally to Shiloh Sophia. Especially when it comes to intersection of art and creativity. How are we relieving trauma? How are we relieving secondary trauma? Focus on the now and transformation through art is something that can work with that. And she's going to talk about it too here shortly. Her background, 2009, I'm going to go through just a little bit. She collaborated with Pulitzer Prize winning author Alice Walker in a project that brought images, her images and Alice Walker's poetry together at the International Museum of Women. In 2014, Shiloh started a new petition, this is important because it's still online, to bring inclusive language to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which means that we are not having a document that is male language dominated. We can have an inclusive language in that special document. And it's still online and it's still going. You can look it up in, is it change.org? Avaz, actually. Avaz. It's in Avaz. So why don't you explain how your approach is David mentioned a little bit about meditation. We've been talking a little bit about meditation, how just just in the, the, the whole idea of within an hour or two of working, if you stop for just a second, what it does is it stops your brain. It, 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 it causes your brain not to loop as much. So it's really, it can be really, really helpful. I think a lot more helpful than people even realize, you know. Thank you, Lise. Thanks so much, all of you, for being here with us. It's such a privilege to sit with you. In the work that I've been doing for the past 20 years, I'm an artist, and I began to work with other artists, and women and girls began pouring into my art gallery. And we had spontaneous art classes, and I began to document and track what was working and what wasn't when a girl would come whose arms were covered with cuts, when girls would come who were going to their therapist every day just to make it through school. And then their moms were coming. And it was this situation where I'm like, I'm having an art gallery here selling my painting for the work of about 100 other women artists. But the people were pouring in with something that was happening. And so I documented this transformation over 20 years of working with thousands and thousands and thousands of women. What was working? What made the change for them? And what I discovered is that because, and I'm not the first person to discover this, but just witnessing it with them, because our trauma lives in story, which is image and word and sound and all of our senses, it lives there. And so the traditional therapies that we've been utilizing to transform the story weren't having the impact on the way the images lived inside of the women. And so we started looking at how can we transform how that image actually occurs for that woman in her body, in her spirit, and in her day-to-day -day life. And so we began to bring the trauma into the canvas. We began to make the cuts into the canvas, to put the blood onto the canvas, to put the story in, to actually name it, but not just talk about it, to actually mark it down, to do layers, to mark layers of your life, to put the perpetrators in, to talk about it in color and shape. And what began to happen is, within an hour or two, the story began to change and the tears went into the canvas and the tears turned into laughter in such a way that I was utterly astonished. And so we continue to do this. I teach this at university. I teach this online. We work between, with between 300 and 1,000 women a month globally to transform their story through image. And why is this so relevant? One, you get to get off that story. You get to see what the next story is. We call it being well enough that if you can get through the place where you are, you can get to a place where you're well enough. And when you're well enough, that's the natural place, the desire to reach out to others in human rights that happens. It spills over because when you begin to be healed, you can't help but do that. That's what's 
natural. And so in all the work I do with women and with men and children is to help them get their story clear, articulated, honored, and actually captured in form. Because it occurred in form, the trauma occurred in form. So now that it's in form, they can set it aside. They can bring beauty to it or start again. And then they have the chance and the freedom <coughs> to create a new story. And they can't get to the, even, the inquiry of the new story until the old story has been honored and laid down and processed. And it moves out of their body. It moves out of their spirit. And there's a lightness that comes. And what's so powerful is no therapist or healer is doing it for them. They are doing all their own work. And so there's a sense of authorship and possibility because they healed themselves. But to do it without image, and I've tried both ways through the experiments. I've tried to do it in language and circle, but it only worked with the images. And so that's the work that, that we're doing. And uh, towards the end of our panel, I'll be offering a tool called the Red Thread Circle, which is what we do to help people not feel isolated. And so that's one of the tools I wanted to bring is when we're going through all of this, how do you feel connected to those who know what you're going through? And so we will post to our community and text to our community with an online place where we say, I'm going through trauma. Something just happened. My husband just did this. this and it's worldwide. And then everybody, within moments, pours prayers and energy. There's thousands of people praying with us right now in the circle because we're connected. And so ending isolation is a part of this. You do not feel like you're in it alone. And when you tell your story in the company of others, you don't feel as alone. When you don't feel as alone, you get to create a new story. And we need lots of people telling new stories here at the United Nations and in our world. So thank you, Lisa, for inviting me.